Hello and welcome back to another Vinyl Shootout here on the Safe and Sound Texas Audio Excursion. I'm David Bianco. Well, Jethro Tull was one of my favorite bands of the early and mid-70s. Truth be known, I probably saw Jethro Tull more than any other band. I mean, I was living in the Chicago area, and it seemed like they toured in the U.S. quite a lot. I saw them multiple times on a tour when they were here in City A. I would go to Indianapolis. I'd go to Chicago. They actually came to a smaller venue outside of Chicago near where I lived in Gary, Indiana. It just seemed like they were really putting in the hours on the road. And I really got hung up on the uniqueness of Ian Anderson's vocals and his flute playing, which was just so unique. I mean, I can remember so well sitting in a very close row, second or third row at a couple of the concerts, and a couple of them had a jutted out stage on each side where he would come out and lean down and play that flute, and you felt honored if you got a little bit wet sitting there and listening to him go at it, because he wasn't a flute player. He was a monopolizer. He, he played that with such veracity and intensity. It just was unbelievable. And sometimes that didn't quite come out on the vinyl. Uh, and, and so that's interesting because today I'm going to be doing a comparison between the original pressing of um, Stand Up, which was Jethro Tull's second album, and the not so recently but in 2022 released uh, acoustic sounds analog productions version on a 180 gram vinyl with the rti doing the pressing on 45 rpm two discs so the the idea here is to get a sense of how much could really be extrapolated out of this recording because honestly in my opinion None of the recordings uh, of Jethro Tull really were strong in what I would call strong um, engineering feats or high, highly accurate degrees of recording. And that became apparent to me when I saw them live. And so uh, I was having a recollection of that very sentiment about those records when I decided to pick up this stand-up album. Now, I had already acquired the, the Aqualung UHQR from uh, Acoustic Sounds and Analog Productions as well, and I'll be dealing with that in a separate video, but this stand-up album is one that is a variety of music as Jethro Tull and Ian Anderson as the main writer was really deviating some on this second album in 1969 away from that bluesy, more kind of feel that was on their initial release called This Was. Now, in the UK, this album reached number one, and they had uh, ironically released a single, uh, Living in the Past, which later was an album name that had Living in the Past, but Living in the Past was not a song on this album, ironically, yet it was peaked at number three in the UK. Kind of an interesting thing that happened, but... Back to the writing, as Ian's style started to change and he got more of an identity, it really created a rift with Mick Abrams, who was on the first album and was, was much more um, of a bluish, bluesish kind of artist. And that separation is, is what happened after this album because really they were going in two different directions. And Ian Anderson really started to develop a style and a technique and a writing methodology that aligned to the kind of music that we got used to in the catalog from Jethro Tull. So this album, Stand Up, is in fact a standout, in my opinion, because it really solidified Jethro Tull into this definition that they had. Now, the song selection on the album is very solid. But the question becomes, how does it sound? Well, one of the unique things about this album was actually um, the cover and the jacket and the way it was done. Going back to the 
the OG here and pulling it out and looking at what it had. So it had this kind of unique stand-up <laughs> where the group stood up when you did that to it, right? And uh, so it was really cool, really different. And, uh, and it was something that, you know, you kind of usually covers a crate and you can look at the exterior. But, you know, the, even if it had a gatefold, it was usually just pictures. So this was a little bit of animation, so to speak, in here. And so that was really a, a cool talking point to it and something that was very different. And so reflecting back on the original pressing and listening to it, I again came back to the fact that I really don't think that they were recorded all that well and in some ways mixed all that well. And of course, we had the whole series of Stephen Wilson uh, remixes that came out in the you know 2010, 11, 12 through 16 um, period where, and I call this reimagining a bit, where the, the mix was redone. And it really did bring out certain things and change certain things around uh, to where it was it was different. And it was in many ways very satisfying to be able to hear different things because of the way it was mixed. But I didn't put it in this shootout because it is so different. And really to A, B, compare those two, in my opinion, doesn't really serve a purpose because they are not, in fact, uh, mixed the same way at all. Whereas in this case, we have... Uh, analog productions coming through this and in fact taking original master tapes that were the original two-channel mix. And so what do we have with the analog productions? We have a stout and tip-on jacket. Very shiny as you may see here and it uh, is two albums of 45 rpm and it also has this same and very nicely printed, very dark, uh, great, very stiff stout and jacket. Really, really robust. Well done. Great job, Chad and, and the design team that worked on this to get this right. This really harkens back to the way it was done originally and bests it, which is nice. I mean, it really is quality. And I think that that's always you know what we want to see when we pay top dollar now this isn't huge dollar this is 65 dollars or so i believe so uh, you're getting a 45 rpm dual disc on this uh, and and the quality of the vinyl is great and it's pressed at rti so what can i say about the differences here well in my opinion they're pretty profound um, i found there to be just an awakening of um, Ian's voice, an awakening of the flute, the drums and the bass in the analog productions release on the 45 RPM. It was really a refreshing new experience with this album, which is kind of really, I think, what you want to get when you're putting a few extra bucks towards an album. And I really felt like um, every song had an improvement in it above and beyond the original pressings from the U.S. I don't have a U.K. original. But my point is, for me, as someone who's had that uh, original since 69, um, you know, that's what I've had to listen to for all these years. And so this was really almost like a veil being removed from the speakers a bit on, on much of the sound. And again, listening to this, and I found myself a bit closing my eyes and recalling uh, going to those concerts. It, it was almost some of these sounds were take you there kind of sounds, uh, which I really hadn't had the experience of with the originals because they always were a bit muffled to me, I guess I'll say. So, you know, for me, uh, being that I went to so many, I think I counted eight or nine, eight or nine, I can't remember if it was eight or nine concerts that they went to. And I know a couple of those were seeing them twice uh, in the same city with multiple dates. But uh, but I definitely enjoyed the heck out of it. And back in those days, uh, you didn't pay an arm and a leg for a seat at a concert. 
and uh, and the showmanship of Jethro Tull as a band and Ian Anderson specifically as an artist was something that was very unique. Go back to YouTube, look at videos of their concerts in the 70s. Um, Ian, uh, I even called him a bit of a madman in a way. He was, uh, when he got into it, he got into it. And, you know, if anybody could ever claim flute abuse, (laughs) they would do it on Ian Anderson because, man, that was a tool. I mean, he... He used that thing as an auditory weapon. And, and you know, it just, uh, I haven't seen him, you know, in the 2000s to know how intense he is. Of course, he's much older now. But just the passion and the emotion of what he did and the craft of it, um, you know, it, it almost felt like when you listened to him live, like he was recalling how he wrote it or how he first imagined it because it was just such a personal kind of uh, approach and attack that he had, which, you know, honestly, uh, going to a lot of concerts, I've never really known an artist quite as connected to their music as as Ian Anderson was. Uh, I mean, I just, I thought about that a lot, because as I listened to the analog productions, and again, take you there, close your eyes. It reminded me of that. It reminded me of uh, being in those front rows and and getting a, a, a few bits of the stuff flying in the air. You could see it in some of the videos where, you know, the veracity of what he was doing. And, um, you know, there was a joke in high school. We'd say, I got spit on by Ian Anderson last night, and it was great. You know, just... Uh, but, but anybody who knew Tull knew exactly what you were talking about. And, and so that really, you know, for me, to get a record and put it on and really get that you are there. And not, you know, obviously it's not a live album, so it's not that kind of thing. But it is the, the sound of it and the, the, the accuracy of it and just the, the feel of the flute and, and his vocals. Uh, it just really, to me... Um, created uh, an emotional recollection that I haven't had with uh, very much before. So, you know, Chad and the team, I mean, uh, excellent job. I mean, really uh, squeezed is all they could out of that because I, I frankly didn't know that those master tapes had that much in them given what I have heard of them over, over the decades, literally. So um, to me, this is where you know, an analog uh, tape and a proper process and production and uh, methodology for a nice, clean, quiet surface through RTI really pays those dividends, you know. And it's kind of like the experience I had with the UHQR of Steely Dance Can't Buy a Thrill. Just a total awakening uh, of, of an album that I know so well just really opening it up and peeling back the layers on things I had never heard before. But again, uh, and, and that had an emotional response vis-a-vis maybe my recognition of the record. But in the Tull case here with Stand Up, it really took me back. And that kind of a uh, experience really, you know, made the music and the pressing and the experience of the audio very relevant to me and and just a three-dimensional experience, which, you know, what the heck else can you ask for? I mean, it just really was amazing. So if you like this album, you pick up this copy from Analog Productions. Even if you have a copy and you really like it, I'd pick it up because it will be a revelation. Again, no comparison here to the Steve Wilson because it's a remix. And to me, those are different. That's a different discussion and approach on how I would look at it. But this really, in a comparison sense, I could sell my OG and never never look back on it, to, to be honest with you. It's that good. So as always, thanks for watching. This was really a fun one for me because it really brought back so many memories. Somebody said this was a vinyl shootout. I said it was a vinyl cannonball. Because this one really, for me, hit it out of the park. 
If you haven't subscribed, I'd appreciate you considering doing so by clicking on the bell down there. The black one gets you all of your notifications and the thumbs up like will get you uh, some algorithm improvements for me. And I appreciate that. Comments are always welcome. What do you think of this album? And have you heard this version? It really is outstanding. So this is why we do these video shootouts, to give you some feedback on it. And again, this one really, for me, had a really strong emotional connection, given that Tull is one of my top five artists and definitely my top three that I've seen live. And um, this really was a revelation to me. So as always, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time on the Safe and Sound Texas Audio Excursion. Take care, everybody.